everyone, Stu here from Touch Loops, back with another video. So this time we're going to be breaking down the iconic sounds of artists like Caribou, Ross and Friends, Fred again, really melodic, emotional house. We're going to be going through the demo for our pack Euphoric Memory, which we released last week at time of recording. It was a pack that I put together and as I was making the demo, I thought there's so much in here that I think is quite useful if you're trying to make this sort of music. A lot of techniques within Ableton, uh, a lot of the plugins that I use to achieve this sound. So we're going to go through all of that. It's quite a big session, but we're going to make it as manageable as possible. If you head over to the Touch Loop site or to our SoundCloud, you can listen to the demo in full there and then come back over to this video where we'll be breaking it down section by section, instrument by instrument. So yeah, let's get into it. So here's the demo. Uh, as you can see, it's not the hugest session, but uh, there is a lot going on within these drum groups and a lot of these synth sounds uh, and bass sounds are quite CPU intensive. You're gonna see I'm juggling things on and off to try and keep, <laughs> keep it all running. Uh, but yes, we've broken it down into beats, bass. Uh, these are all sort of the, um, synths and organic sounds the the musical content really and then um some vocal stuff at the bottom which we'll do last so let's jump into the beats yeah so kind of a classic classic house beat uh so it's made up of four elements let's go into the drum rack first uh oh here we are so we're using well, first up, Big Kick. It's a really good place to start. So I didn't know about Big Kick it, until quite recently. It's um, Plugin Boutique's uh, kick synth that they released. And some of you might have noticed this preset that's loaded up immediately uh, is the same one that Disclosure use. And I, I, like many of us, probably have been following the Disclosure Twitch stream or the YouTube rips of them you know from like soul state and uh, musical streams and they use this uh preset all the time and i had to know what it was because i just loved the sound of it and that's that's what this is it's a really dry round kick drum this took me a while to figure out as well so for ages i was trying to work out where this cut line dmb kick 2 was because i was going up into these load samples and banks but if you go down into file factory cut line there it is DMB kick two. So that's the sample. Um, it can be tuned to the the key of the session. It's got this Guilford Attacks 53 for the uh, top, the top sounds. This is the synth kick. And then this sample here is the the attack, the, the attack sound. And then this is the, the presets for the shape of it. It's running through a bit of Pro Q3 just to roll some of that attack off. So if I play, that's it there. And then with this off, can hear how much clickier it is, um, which I didn't like. It was interfering too much with the percussion. So that's the kick. Here's the clap. You can hear it kind of changing every time. So this is the best clap. Comes as part of Ableton's. Uh, I think it's part of their core library, but it could also be a Max for Live edition. I've loaded up an LFO, mapped the the LFO signal to the sloppy setting of the claps. And then I've set that to a rate of 1.5 um, with a reasonable amount of depth. Um, I've pulled the offset down so that the numbers move between uh, 7 and 48. So that's, you know, reasonably tight sounding. It doesn't go all the way to 100. Tail's quite short, not much decay. I kind of wanted that dry, clappy sound, um, but I wanted it to sound like uh, there was flamming, you know, diff like a group of people clapping. Um, they're not perfect every time, you know as they move around the groove. And that's basically what this is doing. And then DS snare from the same kit, um, that's just tuned, sort of a bright snappy snare. And then all together, uh, if I just solo this group, this is what they all sound like. So you can really hear the clap moving. Then on top of that, um, I'll just layer them on top. We have some 909 hats.
bit of a chain on these. I'm rolling off everything under 100 because nothing under that is necessary for this sound and it'll just be muddying up where the kick is. Driven through a bit warmer, which is a preset within the saturator, saturation plugin within Ableton. And then they're being sent through a phaser flanger, so it's set to phaser. Uh, I think this is just the default setting and I have set it to about 36%. Uh, this is really reminiscent of Caribou, the kind of phasey movement of his percussion. And I have a chain with the two samples. So this is the closed one and this is the open one. And then you can see the MIDI moves between the two. I've added some loose claps. So this is uh, something that I built. So this is a uh, simpler and it has a waveform in that is all of my favorite claps. I've set it to slice mode so that I can, uh, if I get my keyboard here, I can play through all my favorite clap sounds on one keyboard or MIDI clip here. So if I move all of these up, so this, this is what they sound like. It's just a really quick way of organizing all of your samples. So instead of loading up a drum rack with, and then loading all the different clap options in or by going, you know, searching through the, this here, looking for my clap sounds, I just have them all loaded into one simpler and then I can scrub through them, which is a pretty neat trick, I guess. And then some tambourine sound where I've rolled the top off a little here because that's far too bright and that kind of deadens it a little. Altogether, that's beat one. On the group, I've put a uh, Pro Q3. Again, just rolling a little bit more of the top end off. There's this, uh, you see that spike there that I didn't want. Uh, and then it's being run through the uh, API 2500, which is a UAD compressor, bus compressor. So we've kind of got a reasonably long attack because I didn't want to lose any of the transients. Uh, it's compressing three to one, so pretty gentle and a really fast release. The threshold is set to hard, but the uh, this detector thrust tone thing is just set to medium old uh, feedback type and uh, then it's just getting staged as well so I'll turn it off and on so you can hear the difference so it's subtle it's subtle but I can hear for example the claps are sitting it's really gluing that whole beat together I can hear them sitting within the beat more um, and then at the end a decapitator which just gives it a little bit of um, crunch. You know, that really tapey crunch sound. Okay, beat two. Cool, a bit more of a garage vibe here. So let's break it down. Uh, some acoustic bells, which are from the pack, which I've imported into the demo. Really nice, just adding that organic quality. And then we've got this garage kit. So this kit is uh, just part of Ableton's core library of kits. Um, the only thing I've done is replaced the kick drum it comes loaded with, with Big Kick. Uh, this is Cutline DMB kick 01 so similar sound to the previous beat but a slightly different timbre uh, then we have another shaker sound again just taken straight from the back rolled off some of the top end here i've also used lfo tool to sidechain it um, sometimes i like to use lfo tool over setting up a sidechain from this kick i mean this kick would be a really good candidate for a sidechain because it's so it has a strong attack and very little uh, decay and release, so a really good clean signal. But I like to use LFO tool. Um, you can really shape the smoothness and um, you know the overall shape of the sidechain. 
um, which sometimes I find preferable to using, to having to set up, you know, a, a sidechain signal send and then the compressor and everything. It's just a bit quicker. And then uh, here's the first instance of smooth, uh, Soothe. It will analyze this frequency and um, dynamically reduce harshness in certain sounds. So instead of you having to go through and set up a bunch of nodes where you hear um, problems, it will just move around and, and listen and be constantly adapting the signal. So uh, let's listen to it. Yeah, so there's all this here. So if we listen, this is what it's removing, this, this resonance and harshness. Last part of this beat is Analog Lab. So this is our first instance of uh, Altoria's Analog Lab, which is all over this demo. You're going to hear it a lot. Um, it just is full of classic uh, synths and um, drum machines and things. But interestingly, this clap sound, if I check we have it soloed, yep, this uh, clap sound, Mm, CPU's freaking out about that, sorry, but you can you can hear it. So it's just a noise, effectively, it's a noise oscillator that's being uh, shaped and things. So you probably heard here the first time the beat kind of goes a little bit weird. So if I uh, press A and switch over to automation view, go to portal, we can see what's happening. So this is uh, some automation set to dry wet. This is portal by output, by the way, a really great effect unit. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. It uh, just rips apart sounds. Um, so it's set to the scanner setting. If we have a look a little bit more deeply at what I mean, it's doing loads. But basically, it's a granular delay that's stretching and grain delaying um, the sound as it goes through, almost randomly by the looks of it. So let's have a listen. Yeah. Absolutely nuts. Uh, that's being run through Decapitator, like beat one. Um, so that's that setting there, if you want to know what it is. Uh, again, another instance of the API 2500, which is compressing, squashing everything, giving it character, and exactly the same settings as well. Uh, pretty much it's compressing slightly harder, so a four to one ratio, um, but same nice slow attack to let everything through before it starts compressing and a nice quick release. Pro Q3 again just dipping some of this high-end energy. Um, I have a real problem with overly bright percussion. <laughs> I really like it to be dull. Some transient shaper at the end, or transient master by Native Instruments. And this is rolling off the attack. Uh, so all of these things stacked up together were becoming quite... The, the, the transients were overly bright and overly hard-hitting, and this is just smoothing them out. Let's see if I can play it with and without. So it's doing a lot. It's doing a lot to kind of sit the beat in a place where you can really crank it and nothing's going to jump out. In fact, that, I mean, that's mostly this chain is really from, from you know, here onwards. We're just trying to stop this from becoming painful to listen to at a really high volume. Um, you know, tamping down the very high end, rolling off the transients, uh, compressing so no sound jumps out too loud. So beat three. cool and then it sort of has a, a variation nice uh, nothing on the group here and uh, I think so this uh, we'll do this one first actually so this instrument rack is the DS drum kit again part of Ableton so we've already heard the clap and the snare uh, separately but this is just the whole kit has a really nice dry synthesized sound we're running it through Soothe again. That harshness there, that resonance is what we're pulling out. And then again, some Transient Master, again, rolling off the attack. Pretty straightforward. Uh, and then the drum rack, which I've made, is again, big kick. Let's have a quick peek. Different kick here, yep, the John Lee Deep House 2. Uh, a good amount of hold, good amount of decay. Really heavy, weighty kick. 
and then the DS clap is, again, we've used it earlier, this time it isn't being LFO'd or anything, yeah, I just wanted kind of a rigid clap amount. Woo! Let's put them together. Mm. That's a good one. So here's beat four. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, again, 808 core kit, Ableton zone, sort of an A and B section. Section A, section B. Great. Then we have these clappy samples, which are the samples I've recorded. It sounds like it's probably just me clapping a whole bunch of times and then um, uh, summing down into one audio file. And then I'm actually playing it twice. This sample and the same sample pitched up uh, a third. And then together they really, and, and they're you know offset as well. So they're really flaming and it just, for me, it just adds a whole bunch more texture to what you know out of one sample. A little all over the place velocity wise, just to give it that realism again. And then the last sample we've got here is a tappy hat. So you can hear it panning left and right a lot, but there isn't an auto pan on here. And how we're doing that is within con the control setting of um, simpler, there's a random pan feature where you can randomly uh, set the sample to play back left and right. So if I go down the middle, and as I increase this, you can hear it randomly jumping from left and right. And then again, we've rolled off some of the top and rolled off anything that could be happening down here, getting in the way of the rest of the beat. Nothing on the group. Didn't feel like anything was jumping out particularly that needed compressing. I didn't think it needed any more distortion. I didn't think it needed any more transient shaping. So that one was good to go pretty fast. Mm. Nice, so we're bringing back the same uh, clap from earlier, this LFO controlled DS clap. And then this beat is mostly made up of uh, audio loops from the pack, which I've already made. this kind of cool textured loop, top loop. Another top loop there, kind of a rim, rim sound. And then another big kick. Let's see what sample this one is. I think it's probably gonna be, yep, same kick to from the start of this uh, demo, but tuned slightly differently, probably, a, I think, slightly more hold, probably a different amount of attack. And also there's no uh, Q3 on this one, so I didn't need to, I, I wanted all of that high-end, uh, transient, clicky sound. Nice. So, there are the beats. So let's leave it there. Uh, we'll call this part one and then uh, part two we're going to go over the bass, the synths and the vocals.